Hello, hello, testing one, two, three. Can everybody hear me? Hello, hello. How's everybody doing tonight? My name is Landy Shaughnessy and welcome to Spindle TV. We've been away for a couple of weeks uh, while I was up in Indiana uh, filming some new product videos and uh, spending some time up there. Uh, and uh, got back to Florida. Had to wait for my lights and everything is to get shipped back to me because I couldn't bring them on the plane, of course. Uh, so that gave me a couple of these last two weeks to kind of chill and get some things done around the house. First start of summer, you know, kind of coming in. And we are back with some live videos. Thanks for you guys and girls that are joining me. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. So, all in all, I hope y'all are doing well. And uh, I'd like to uh, welcome some of the new people that uh, haven't watched me before. Um, you know, hopefully they'll come back because I'm good looking. <laughs> but uh, all right. And I'm smart too. I actually, you know, know what I'm doing when I teach this stuff. All right. Uh, welcome, Kevin, Ronnie. Ronnie, good to see you again. Guy McMillan, looking forward to working with you on Thursday. Kool-Aid, good to see you. And uh, hopefully everything is going well and hopefully the audio is going well. I just reset up all the lighting and camera uh, because uh, I'm a last minute kind of guy, you know. And uh, unless it's the first minute. You know? <laughs> all right, let's get settled in. I'm still a little early. We don't start till 7.15, so we'll see who all is watching. And if anybody from Bang is watching, I could use a sponsorship. <laughs> All right. Oh, what are we doing today? Oh, we are doing a Hollywood-style vanity mirror. Now, someone had asked me, uh, kind of behind the scenes, what can, how, how I came up with the idea, or, or what, what, what inspired the idea of a vanity mirror, and um, uh, my ex had one uh, that was really nice, and uh, I always wanted to make one for my daughter, um, and that just never come to be, it never happened at all, and I'm thinking of a project, I'm like, okay, what do I want to make that is like a full build, because I would actually like to build this. Um, I'd actually like to put this on the Build It TV channel and build this one uh, through. So not only do the design, but make it. And um, so uh, I thought, you know, hey, been wanting to do it. Let's go ahead and do it. And hey, Jeff Smith and John Thompson, thanks for popping in. So that's, you know, kind of, you know, it, it was just today I was on the phone and looking for ideas of uh, something to make. Because I got a lot of stuff already waiting. You guys are waiting for. You're waiting for the beehive uh, box to get finished up. You're waiting for. Uh, my God, there's a wall hanging crossword puzzle or uh, not crossword. Not crossword. What's it called? Scrabble. Scrabble board. Uh, that, that's got to get wrapped up, and you guys, I got to get the files out to you and all. So uh, let's add one more thing to the list. I'm trying to get caught up, but uh, we're doing all right. Okay. Let's talk about some things first because this is going to be a combination of CNC and woodworking, guys. We're going to do some actual building and things. Not tonight. Uh, tonight's going to be the design and everything, but uh, we're actually going to be building. And so some of the things that I would recommend that would make things easier for you would be a Craig jig or some way to do pocket hole screws for some framing. Uh, let's take a look at, let's jump over to camera three. Bum, bum, bum. Let me uh, pull up my, I believe I am on camera three. There we go. And let's get me down in the bottom left. Um, let me learn how to rework my software here. Uh, there we go. All right, I'm down here. Hello. All right. Uh, can you see me now? Hey, bro, can you spot me? <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, we've got... On camera three, let's get out of the Vetric for just a minute. And let's take a look at some of 
uh, the photos that uh, were inspirational. So this is kind of a top view, excuse the desk, we were just moving into the desk and everything, but this is kind of a top view of what that vanity mirror looks like. And uh, it had some cubbies and all, and then there's a desk. Um, the, uh, let's see, let's close that. Oop. No, let's not close out of that. I need that back up and um, the things that we're going to need, uh, Wago connectors or wire connectors to connect the lighting. Uh, these uh, Wago connectors, uh, Wago, whatever you want to call them, uh, they're on Amazon, a 50 pack, a uh, quantity of 50 for 20 bucks. Uh, can't beat it. That's what you want. Uh, also, um, these Harbor Breeze lights, they're also on Amazon as well. Uh, let's pop back over to uh, Amazon and uh, let's uh, Harbor, let me learn how to type Harbor Breeze light. All right, so, and also, let me, let me back that up. Let me, let me back, I, Harbor Breeze is just kind of, I'm used to getting that, but uh, you can find uh, these different kits. Uh, these, uh, you want a medium, medium bulb because we're gonna be using LED lights and everything, uh, but uh, you want them with the wires already wired, okay, your black and white wires. So uh, we um, can look at, you know, just a generic brand, uh, this one, uh, looks like a five pack for $8.99 versus the Harbor Breeze uh, single 60 watt light socket for three, I think it's like $3.99, $3.95 or something like that. Um, whichever way you go, but this is what we're going to use uh, for the lights and then we're going to just use LED bulbs uh, to get the nice, we want daylight balanced LED bulbs for uh, it's a you know it's a vanity mirror for you know uh, the little girls and ladies and women and, and and whatever you know guys that put on makeup whatever you know guys you know uh, to to just look good the best lighting it's great for selfies <laughs> yes but uh, just nice lighting um, so we're gonna be using LED lights for that and so Wago connectors the three because we're gonna be daisy chaining these lights together so um, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. We are going to need at least 16 of these sockets. Uh, we'll find out when we get into the design how many exactly we're gonna need, but I believe it's gonna be around 16. Um, we're gonna need some one by four material for the frame. So let's jump over to, uh, let me get uh, SketchUp rocking for me here. And uh, standard view back. Let me get out of this. All right, so this frame is going to be made of um, one by fours. So uh, we're gonna go on this particular one. I'll get a cut list and everything ready for you guys, but um, we're gonna be going about uh, 30 and a half inches uh, on the two um, rails and then roughly about uh, 17 and a half inches on the stops. Okay, uh, so we're gonna need some one by four material, uh, three quarter inch thick one by fours, um, and mirror. So for the mirror, now I, you can go to Lowe's and buy a mirror and everything, but 99.9% .9 of the time, there is a glass and mirror company somewhere in your town. Uh, I have a few of them, but one of them uh, cuts custom mirrors to whatever size. The, the odd size doesn't matter. Well, we're going with a 24 by 30 mirror. And if I were doing production of these, I would get a bunch of those. You know, I'd probably, you know, do 10 at a time or something like that until they sold. Uh, because these vanity sets and everything, I mean, they, can, they, they, they run up to around 650, 700, you know, it's crazy dollars, uh, especially if you do not just the desktop, but you do the whole desk too. And uh, we'll talk about that when we get into the actual build. Um, 
but um, uh, so definitely going to need some one by four material and we'll talk about the other size materials when we get into the drawing uh, the base of the drawer system that's that the mirror and all sits on uh, when we get into Vetric and we'll see what size that is I think I could pull it off with a one by 12 but might have to glue up a panel who knows um, and uh, hey Troy and Bob and Don and everybody thanks for popping in and uh, I think uh, I think let me see here might be hiding in the back hello Amanda how are you doing all right so um, the thing of uh, the lights um, I believe 16 is gonna do it but we might might be less we'll find out once we get into Vetric. so that kind of gives us a um, roundabout look at sorry my Instagram is going crazy blowing up with all the muscle pictures that I'm putting out there Lord of mercy uh, let me turn that uh, volume down um, there we go follow me on Instagram <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see here. Um, we've got, let's undo that, control Z to put that back. So the mirror's roughly, I mean, I want to say, I think it's like three sixteenths or a quarter inch thick. It's not, it, you know, it's not, uh, it's, it's a standard mirror that you would see, you know, that uh, that new construction would put into a bathroom or something like that. But uh, we're going to go there and... Um, some of this project in uh, Vetric, it could be set up as a two-sided job. I'm going to set it up as a two-sided job because um, uh, the top panel, not only do I want to cut the little trays and divots in it uh, for the drawer system, but I would like on the bottom side, I would like to go ahead and cut some grooves into it for my little walls and stuff for the little drawer system. Let me see if I can pull that photo back up again. Uh, let's to go here and let me see if I um, let me see here again we were just organizing all the makeup and everything but uh, this little drawer system you see how it's flat on the top there we're not gonna do flat you know we're gonna do we're gonna have a nice tray uh, we're gonna have some little divots a little place for the wine glass whatever the case may be cell phone holder we're gonna go all out since we have a CNC and we can uh, but the, this little system is just a, it sits on top of a tabletop. Uh, but uh, we're going to do that. And like I said, I believe I can get away with a one by 12 for this um, and all. But uh, the on the bottom side, I'd like to cut the grooves where these drawer walls go and everything. Right. Uh, we'll see uh, how, you know, how. Uh, we'll see how adventurous we get. Um all right, so let's get back to our Vetric software and let's get started. Now, this is going to be, I, I'm honestly, uh, like, I think I'm going to run out tomorrow and buy the materials for this. I have to order the light sockets. I don't know how long it'll take to come in. I'll do Amazon Prime uh, to get those. If they, it's going to take too long, I'll get them from Lowe's. Uh, they're going to be about the same dollars, $3, uh, same amount, about $3.95 each or something like that. But uh, the one by four material, and I'll put all the lists together, and I'll get everything nice and organized, uh, and uh, I'll get you guys a cut list and all. I'm actually going to do on this one. I'm going to do a PDF plan because I'd like to see this one like all the way through, like I used to do back in the day, uh, full design because uh, it's easy to make, and it can make money if you want to sell them, make them in production, sell them all, and they, you know. CNC is not going to do it all, but it's going to do a lot of it. Okay, so for those of you that don't have, you know, all the cool tools, table saws, and stuff like that, no worries. We can still do it on a table saw. Uh, but um, one tool I would recommend: run down to Lowe's, spend 150 bucks, and get yourself a Craig jig. Pocket holes, pocket holes, pocket holes, because that's what the frame that's going to hold the mirror is. It's going to be the easiest and strongest construction for us. And uh, pocket holes. Okie dokie. All right, so let's jump back into SketchUp one more time and let's get rid of this mirror here. Bear with me a second. Let's uh, 
delete these guidelines. I was going to lay out my holes here. Okay, now, um, if uh, on these frames, these frames, um, they are going to be pocket holed in. Okay, they're going to be joined, pocket hole joinery. And uh, we're actually going to build the frames. Okay, first, we're going to, however many you want, right? We only need one for per vanity mirror and all, but you know, let's say you're doing a kind of a production of these. You're going to build out these frames. You're going to pocket hole them, have them all sitting to the side. Then you're going to throw them up on your uh, CNC. Okay, you're going to literally clamp that frame on its CNC and you're going to uh, zero out on the bottom left corner of your material and you're going to come in and you're going to cut this rabbit where the mirror goes. Um, once that rabbit's cut, then we're going to change our clamps from the outside to the inside. We're going to put our clamps in there on that rabbit to hold them down. Uh, and then we're going to come in and we're going to cut a rabbit on the outside all the way around. Um, this, uh, this is going to be for the little box that's going to kind of enclose the wi the wiring and the lighting and everything and all and uh, it's a very simple box I'm going to show you how we're going to build that and everything here in just a moment uh, but um, that is uh, basically frames are going to be already built thrown on the table going to be pocket hole and then we're going to drill the or not drill cut with the CNC we're going to cut out the light socket holes okay so everything is going to be done boom 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 and uh, once that frame's done, take it off, put the next one on. Uh, the if your machine is not big enough to accommodate a, a DWC, our our digital wood carver twenty four forties is big enough to accommodate this entire frame and do this entire project. Uh, four by fours and four by eights, of course, can handle more than one um, mini carvers. If you have a mini carver, uh, you could do tiling uh, and. Uh, cut this out um, or you could actually do the individual pieces and then assemble the frame at the end however you want to do it um, you know those uh, all of those things can be worked out um, and uh, the uh, yes it is um, now uh, we are going to let's see here all right the <laughs> I'm trying to think of, uh, let's build the little rails. Okay, so our little rails, and uh, let me actually do this first. Let me come in here and ungroup. Not ungroup, I need to get with it, buddy. Let me draw a little rectangle here. Bear with me just a second. All right, that rectangle is going to be perfect right like that. Get out of there. Push pull, P for push pull. We're gonna come down to a quarter of an inch. Wonderful. And then we're gonna get out of that and come into this middle one here draw a rectangle what I'm doing is I'm completing my little grid or my little uh, rabbit all the way around the outside of this that's what we're gonna be cutting with the CNC push that down to 0.25 okay now by doing the top it should have automatically no it didn't do the bottom for me because I made it unique so bear with me let me do it again here But yes, Amanda, it is. Uh, let's see here. Rectangle. Let me find my three quarters right there. Beautiful push pull. We're gonna bring that down to that level. That should have done the other side for me. Yep, wonderful, good. And one more time here. R for rectangle, draw that rectangle there, and P for push-pull, 
and push that down to there. All right. So this frame here, and if I measure, because I'm going to draw out the little frame, we're actually going to build it here virtually, and then we're going to go over to Vetric and get the parts cut out. But if I measure this, we're going to go um, uh, 18 and a half inches uh, across and then um, 36 and a half inches. So 18 and a half inches long and 36 and a half inches across. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're going to take a one by two, basically, right? Um, and uh, the one by two, you know, what, two inches being the nominal measurement, one and a half inches being the actual measurement. Okay. Um, we, our little box that we're going to be building is going to be roughly about that. So let me come in here and draw a rectangle. This rectangle is going to be 18.5 inches. Uh, comma 0.75 and hit enter. Let's go push pull and it's going to be one and a half inches, a one by two. And let's turn to the side so you can see that. So that'll be our one by two. And I don't know why I said 18 and a half inches, 28 and a half inches. So let me add another. 10 inches to this. There we go. All right, now I'm going to triple click on this and uh, I'm going to go G for group and enter. Now, this is SketchUp, by the way, guys and girls. And uh, it's a fun little program to draw in. Um, but uh, let's turn this up 90 degrees. All right, let's move this over into place. Uh, I'm going to grab it right here and stick it right there. And I missed my shot. I shot my shot and I missed it. Look at there, I missed it by a mile. So let's go back into that. Push pull and push it up to there. There we go. So you can kind of get the idea. We're building a little box enclosure, right? All right, now I'm gonna take my move tool and I'm gonna hold down uh, M for move. I'm gonna grab this, uh, let's grab it right here. And I'm going to hold down the control key and drag it over to this side. So that completes that side, All right? And then we're going to take our rectangle tool. And let's learn how to draw a rectangle. All right, let's go push pull and it did not, for some reason that rectangle did not draw. Let's try that again. Come over, down and across. Beautiful. Push pull, we're coming out one and a half inches to that level there. Now notice that there's a little bit of a slant there because when I drew that rectangle, I didn't draw it correctly. So I was up at the top level here instead of the bottom. Let's do that one more time. Get down in that groove and make sure we're down in that groove when we do that. Okay. So with that, triple click, one, two, three. That selects every, all the walls of that particular rectangle we just drew and G for group, right? Um, for those of you that uh, that do not know SketchUp or have never played with it or anything like that, um, I would recommend going to Jay's Custom Creations, J-A-Y-S, Jay's Custom Creations, and on his website, uh, .com, and on his website, he has a link to download SketchUp 8, which is a free version, uh, and um, he's also got a lot of great videos uh, to learn this program, it's very easy to learn and it's great to be able to visualize. So, and uh, it's great to be able to visualize um, don't do that, control Z. Let me try that again, move, grab that, hit that control key and come down and 
snap there. But um, when we are building something, it's great to be able to visualize kind of what that, you know, something will look like and everything and stuff. Now, on this, you have a choice. You know your mirror is going to be put in uh, from the back here and stuff. Uh, you have a choice of leaving the back open. It's going to be up against a wall, most likely. Uh, or put a back panel across the back of it, right? You know, you can close it in with a panel. Totally up to you. You know, a piece of, you know, quarter-inch plywood. Um, and uh, the... Uh, it really just depends. But this frame, let's grab this frame that we just drew, hold down that shift key, click on this, this, and this, and hit M for move to pull that back. This is gonna be pocket hold as well, okay? So we are uh, going to be uh, pocket holes in here, screwing into this side, uh, you know, so the pocket holes will be in our Styles, styles, uh, and um, the, uh, hold on a second. I always get this, uh, bear with me just a second. I always get this um, messed up. Rails, not the styles. The styles are the verticals, rails are the horizontals. Uh, the rails were gonna be, the pocket holes would go into the rails and the, they would be screwing into the vertical styles. Okay, um, so, you know, two pocket holes, two pocket holes, two pocket holes, two pocket holes, and that makes the little one by two frame. Our grooves are going to be cut uh, on the CNC, going to be pocketed out uh, and everything on the CNC, and then these two parts would just attach uh, glue, glue, wood glue, wonderful thing. And, um, you know... Nice uh, sand. You can do a little round over if you want. I tend to just break the edges. I don't round it over. And uh, we go from there. So, you know, I like to break the edges. Um, just uh, so it's not sharp on the fingers and stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a nice visualization without a doubt. And uh, um, the with the amount of lighting, it's going to be... Uh, it, it's it's really it's really a nice little feature. Now, how many of you are still with me and I haven't bored to death, right? So give me a thumbs up, show of hands, let me know that you're still with me and we're cranking because I'm kind of getting this drawn out for you. And then we're gonna take the parts over into Vetric and create all of the cuts, okay? Um, the, uh, uh, the uh, Vetric part of it is is pretty straightforward. It's the assembly, right? I want you to kind of be able to see this. We're actually gonna, you're actually gonna get to see it uh, when we do the build. But I want you to kind of be able to visualize this now, rather than we're creating this design in Vetric in a 2D window and and kind of wondering what the end result is gonna look like. You know what I mean? So. Um, uh hey david all right stand by my throat's a little dry i'm getting uh for some reason i got a frog in my throat okay the uh now the base right now if we go back and look let me pull up uh bear with me just a second here uh, vanity desk. Let's um, let's take a look at something here. I'm gonna pull this over, and this up into a big screen here. Okay, and uh, now they've got. It um, uh, looks like their lighting is kind of in the mirror here versus the type of lighting that we're doing. We're doing the old uh, Hollywood style incandescent, well LED, but the round lights. Um, uh, let's see here. Let's, uh, um, but this has a, the, if you remember a couple of weeks back, we did the chest of drawers design, the chest of drawer builds. So imagine two of those, right? Uh, then there's a connecting desk and then they did a glass top so you can see everything through, uh, the, um, 
through the top at all. So, um, you know, uh, just the desk. And like I said, you know, this one's on sale for $1,900. Uh, here's a, another one. This one actually has the lights through the mirror, which we're not doing. We're doing kind of the wooden frame. Uh, we're running at about $1,500. Uh, and we're, you know, um, for just the top part here, you're probably going to be less than $100 in materials. Somewhere around there. I, I'll have to, I'll get the price list and everything um, kind of, uh, I'll get the price list and everything uh, for you guys and girls when I put the uh, PDF together. Uh, a junk drawer. But uh, if you keep your stuff organized, uh, it looks uh, pretty, um, where'd it go? Hold on. Don't, don't go away. I mean, out. Uh, where'd it go? There we go. Uh, it looks pretty cool when uh, the drawers are closed and stuff like that. But uh, that's not what I wanted to show you. That is kind of one of the things I wanted to show you. But uh, let's come back over to here and let's see if we can uh, pull up a larger photo. Uh, but the main drawers, the main drawers in this desk, they're, we, they're going to be shallow. All right. They're going to be shallow. They're going to be for those uh, makeup brushes and, and trays and everything like that. Uh, your um, your different uh, cosmetics and all uh, the tubes and bottles and stuff, they're not that tall. Uh, your bottom drawers would be lar larger because you may have a hair dryer in there, curling irons and, and other you know uh, curlers and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, don't ask me why I know so much about <laughs> what's inside a woman's vanity desk. Um, uh, we'll... Uh, We'll go there, but uh, all right. So let me know. Am I buffering, guys? Am I back? Am I back? I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Was I buffering? All right. So what? What did you? What all did I? Where did I lose you at? Let me see here. Let me go back there. Hello from New Jersey. Good evening. Good evening. Are you down or is it just me? Hi from Indiana. It's not just you, Richard. Okay, I'm back. So where did I lose you? Uh, somebody give me a brief blurb of where I lost you. Um, did uh, did uh, did you see the pictures of the glass top makeup hold? Or did you just come back when I was saying, don't ask me why I know so much about what's inside a woman's vanity mirror? I don't know. Either way, let me know. But uh, we had a major drop off. Everybody dropped off when I froze. So um, let's see. All right, we are back. Interesting. Thirty-five minutes in, and we uh, I lost you. But what I was saying, I don't know what you heard and what you didn't hear. Did you hear about the top drawers are going to be shallow? Uh, those are going to be your makeups, uh, makeup pods and, you know, uh, lipsticks, all that stuff, brushes and things like that. Your lower shelves, they're going to be wider. They're going to be for hair dryers, curling irons, curler sets and things like that. Um, and, uh, so, uh, if you do end up building a drawer system, you got to keep that in mind. Okay. Um, thanks guy. I appreciate that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, um, the just know that when you're building the cabinet um if you decide to go with the chest drawers make sure those we don't want if the drawers are too deep then they're gonna just just like their purses they're gonna you know clutter them up with junk and stuff like that and they want to be able to get access to those brushes so make them shallow all right um all right so uh, yeah, sorry about that. We buffered a little bit. Um, <sighs> okay, we're back. All right, so um, we've got our two-inch kind of uh, enclosure here. Of course, all of our wiring is going to be secured nicely in here. And then in this area, um, I would probably over to the left here. Probably somewhere right about there. Uh, let's go in and 
do this again. All right, a little bit of a push pull. Okay, let's, oops. Let me get rid of this rectangle that I just drew there. Okay, P for push pull, come in and go 0.75, enter. Okay, this will be, uh, this is just kind of a box cutout. Uh, we'll probably cut that out for our electrical outlet. Everything will go into the electrical box to our switch and then to a normal plug that just plugs into the wall behind where the desk is uh, and everything. So we'll have a, we'll have a switch there. Uh, if you wanted to, if you did not want the switch on the face, you could put it on the side uh, with a little dimmer switch or something so they can adjust the lighting, right? Uh, and the switch can be on the side uh, on this box area here. It can go on the side. It doesn't have to go on the front. Um, it's totally up to you. Uh, if we were to uh, look back, you can see the switch for this one is right over here behind the wine glass, right? So um, it can go there, it can go into the side. All right, now the lower portion of this, the lower portion of this, uh, let's go ahead and build that out. Like I said, I believe we can get away or I can get away with a one by 12. Uh, hey Camaro, what's happening bud? Hope you're doing well. Um, and uh, I think I can get away with a one by 12. So let's go ahead and uh, go um, 36 and a half inches, 36.5 comma 11.25 enter. And <clears throat> let's uh, P for push pull. 0.75 enter okay so you can see that now I've got it going vertical I'm about to rotate it upright uh, but I wanted to go ahead and get it drawn uh, G for group all right Q for rotate so I'm gonna rotate this out 90 degrees and then M for move I'm gonna go ahead and move this back here all right okay now I want a little bit of a recess coming in, okay, just in case. Uh, I want, I want, this is gonna be sitting on top of a desk. If you, if you threw it on top of a table or whatever, we need room in the middle where, where, where the person's sitting, okay? Uh, this is where they're gonna put, they're gonna pull stuff out of drawers and they're gonna put it right in front of them, right, to work with. And so if we have this big base sitting on top of the table, that, that big base is kind of in the way. So we're gonna recess it back a little bit, okay? We're gonna create that little indention and everything. Uh, and then we're gonna do some nice little cubbies and trays and stuff over here to drop stuff in, or holders, right? Uh, okay, um, let's see here. All right. I'll um I'll go just the tip and uh, that way it's not too deep. Let's see. Uh, we want to have um, this eleven and a quarter out. I want to come back. I want to say maybe six inches, seven inches. So let's do that. So let's come over here. I'm going to take my tape measure tool and we're going to measure to the center right there. Okay. Get a dotted line there. And then from the center, we're going to go out. Uh, let's go out 10 inches. Is that going to look right? Eight and a half. We're gonna go out eight and a half in both directions. Yep, 
Yeah, that looks good. And we're gonna go back. This is where I think, uh, um, uh, I think I wanna go back. I said six. That might be a little much, right? So let's go, let's go back. Four and a half. Four and a half. We'll go four and a half. All right. Uh, we want, I want a nice smooth curve. I want it to kind of curve into here. So what would be the best uh, way to do this? Um, let's go here to here. And... Let me think. No, that doesn't look good. Um, but um, bum bum. All right. Bear with me. They didn't go back very far on theirs. Um, I want to go back. I just got to figure out which way to draw my arc. Mm, come on, Laney. What do you want to do there, son? Oh, okay, I can do it this way. Uh, let's go with an arc and let's go, uh, let me do this. I'm gonna go halfway, so tape measure tool, tape measure tool, there we go. And <clears throat> I went, this was eight and a half, so I wanna go four and a quarter. Same thing here, oops. <laughs> I don't know why. Four. And a quarter. All right. That's going to be straight across. I, at this, I want to come in to a nice curve. I'm going to do it that way. Yeah, and then I'll do a nice little round over. Um, we'll do kind of a tangent round over here. Uh, let's just do a nice subtle. Tangent edge. You'll get the idea. All right, now I drew that while this was a component, meaning that line that I just drew is useless to me because I actually have to, to be able to get rid of that material, I have to go into the component. But I can use it as a reference, it's there for me to see, so I can uh, come in and reference that there. All right, let's see if that, uh... all right, let me get rid of this line here and here. Okay, now straight line across has to connect these two. Uh, that'll close off this so I can go push pull. Oops, I can go push pull and I can push that down to remove that material. Okay, 
Now I need to draw my tangent lines here. I'm gonna just kind of a soft, subtle arc, something like that. Push, pull, and oh, <clears throat> uh, let me see here. Let me get rid of this line. <clears throat> Let's do that one more time. We'll go here to here. All right, push, pull, and let's just bring that down, kind of round that off. Now we'll do the same thing over here. And push, pull, okay, that didn't go because that line is still here on the outside. When you draw a line on something that is grouped together, it covers the line that when you're inside the group. So therefore, when I drew this line here, it didn't do anything because it was being covered up by the other one. Um, and I can pull that down there. All right. <clears throat> so. That's gonna be the top of our vanity so far. You guys and girls still with me? We ain't froze up yet. We're still good. Okay. Let's go ahead and get rid of these uh, guidelines. All right. All right. Let's see here. Um, okay. So Camaro's uh, was the last one that's come in to say hello. The chat's not moving very much, so it's it's, it's either y'all are really paying good attention or I've lost you again. Just let me know. Somebody say hey, we're all good. And. Uh, and, and all that stuff um, because the last comment in the chat was uh, Camaro but hopefully you're all still with me I'm trying to get th th through this painlessly and quickly and then so we can get over to Vetric and just do the tool pathing and stuff um, and with SketchUp you know SketchUp is free you can import once we do all the 3D design here we can import it straight into Vetric and it'll import the individual parts. So that's useful to us. Uh, we can do that and everything. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's that. All right, let's uh, get rid of this. And let's get rid of that. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do on this vanity top here is generally let's say that that you imagine you let's go into our camera standard view back here uh it's the back view because i'm uh the front when i drew this i drew it uh backwards so i could create the little grooves for the mirror so the back is actually the front in my particular view here right and um so don't get confused by that that's just how it is now imagine if you're sitting at this mirror, right? At this desk, right? Where 90% of the time, if you're looking in the mirror, and hey, imagine it's your teenager and they're they're doing TikToks and all of this stuff, right? And they're they're doing, you know, how to apply your makeup, whatever the case may be, right? What whatever the situation is. They need to be able to read the comments of the um uh, on their phone, you know, the little videos and all the, you know, their users subscribe, whatever the case may be. I'm just kind of throwing a scenario, mental picture in your head. So we want a slot right here in the front in the middle, a cell phone holder, right? That'll hold the cell phone, all right? Somewhere right in there. Uh, over to the left, we're going to create a little dish uh, just for kind of a caddy. We're going to create a nice little glass, you know, for a glass or something over here. 
uh, kind of in a light switch, but probably right in the middle. We're gonna have a little tray for brushes, uh, different makeup brushes, whatever, you know, that they're using right immediately they can throw down. But we're also gonna have a nice little, a nice little place that'll kind of hold a cell phone, right? Uh, that, uh, or, or a tablet, right? Uh, you know, something wide enough that it could hold a cell phone or a tablet uh, and, um, and everything. So you're thinking not just for yourself, you know, you're thinking if I were building this for someone, what would, what would be the neat little, what, what would we have in there, right? So if I were to Google uh, makeup organizer, or makeup caddy or whatever the case may be. Uh, let's go caddy and go to images. Um, <clears throat> you see all kinds of, you know, different things and stuff, you know, and uh, uh, there's like so many different things, right? Well, we're not going, we're not building up we're recessing in. Okay. And I'm sorry, I have the hiccups, but uh, we're not building up. We're recessing in. So we want little trays, little dishes, little wallet catcher, whatever the case may be. Right. Uh, you know, uh, makeup brushes and things like that. Um, if I say makeup tray, trays are flat, right? Um, let's see here. What would be, They're not gonna give me, hold on a second. So, holder. Do, 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 do. You're killing me. Killing me, ladies and gentlemen, killing me. All right, so let's, um, we're getting more and more in there. Uh, we're going to go longer with this, but we want, let me see if I can, see if I can pull one of these up, something along <clears throat> these lines. We'll be back shortly. Of course they will. <laughs> That's just my luck. All right. So they're going to be back shortly while, uh, let's, uh, let's go. Let's go. All right. Um, we'll get it here. We'll get it. We'll get it right now. Dun, 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 dun. All right. This will be this will be a good enough example. Uh, we want some little pockets and everything, but we want something that's going to hold the tablet or cell phone. Uh, so there's going to be not only a little bit of a tilt uh, and everything, we might want to incorporate something along the lines where there's like a little holder that goes in kind of behind that's kind of a support. Uh, there's all kinds of different, uh, you know, uh, things like that. It all depends on the size of your slot, how far it goes down and, and how far the tilt is, right? So what I want to do is we're going to just simulate this here and then we'll figure out a tool path for it and all in Vetric. So let's start off with a rectangle and I'm going to double click to go into this component once again, rectangle and there's my center line. Let me get, let me get a center line in there first. center line. Of course you're not going to give me a center line there, buddy boy. Okay, that'll work. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to go with a rectangle here. Bounce back. I hate when SketchUp does that. Uh, it doesn't know which way I'm, it thinks I'm drawing up in the air where my guideline is and uh, not realizing that I'm down here on this level. 
So I want to be on this level. Let's try that one more time. Beautiful. All right, we're going to go push-pull. Now, on this, on the depth, I'm going to go down, uh, I mean, a good three, at least uh, three-eighths, five-sixteenths. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go point three seven five, And um, we want a little bit of depth. Take a scrap piece of wood and... Uh, cut a groove into it and kind of take a cell phone, whatever your cell phone is, iPhone, whatever it is. Uh, I have a, uh, a uh, LG phone and find out how deep your slot needs to be. One, where it doesn't cover up the screen too much, but two, that it'll support the phone because it's going to be tilted back slightly. And so the width of our groove, when that thing slides back, there's going to be a little bit of a lean. And if the phone or tablet's too heavy, and stuff it's not going to stand up on its own and it might need some back support that's where we would put in a small slot back here that would lean forward okay so i'm going to throw that in i'm going to come to the center here and push pull and this one's only i'm going to go down just a quarter of an inch uh because my little piece is going to kind of come up at an angle and it'll be something that they it'll sit it'll go into one of the drawers and they can pull it out if they need it or not right it just depends you know you just want to you want to kind of be covered for all bases all right let's go ahead and uh on each side here because they could be left or right handed we're going to throw in a bit of a divot uh for a wine glass on this side and we'll match it up here okay and uh, all right um, what Let's see here. What level is that? Um, what do we got here? It's right before that. Good. All right. So I got some thumbs up from you guys and girls. Uh, man, let me know what you mean on that one. And uh, we'll go there. All right. So we're going to go here. And... This is just going to be a regular dish. I'm going to do rounded corners. I'm not really good with rounded corners in SketchUp yet. Uh, so I'm, we're going to round them off uh, in uh, Vetric. Uh, we'll put a fillet in there. But um, I'm not great with the fillets yet in SketchUp. Still working on that. I'm, I'm, it's one of my things too. Uh, 0.25. Um, and... Over here, we're going to do some narrow ones. We'll do one here and then one there. We'll make sure that those are symmetric inside of Vetric uh, when we um, do those. Uh, we're going to go 0.25 on that and push pull 0.25 on that. All right. So, um, it'd be great to. That'll be good for that. Um, for now, we don't want to go too crazy. It's just, you know, we need to have. You know, just some, we need to have some surface area as well, too. All right, let's flip it upside down and 
Let's go ahead and create the box for this, uh, the drawers, and then we're ready to go into Vetric and just wrap this job up. And this will be our desktop caddy. Uh, part one, then we'll start, uh, we'll talk about the light bulbs and stuff. We'll, we'll get the lights laid out in Vetric here in just a few minutes. All right, let's go ahead and uh, come in here. We are going, it's very simple. We're just going to have two sides, uh, one, two, one, two, and then there's gonna be a drawer in the front there, so it's not anything crazy. Uh, so what we want is, um, we want, let me get this uh, camera view, standard view, bottom. There we go, perfect. And on our tape measure here, uh, we're gonna come over and I'm just going to get right on the inside edge of this curve here. And from there, I'm going to come over three quarters of an inch, 0.75. Okay. Over here is going to be three quarters of an inch as well. Now, I want to know exactly what that measurement is. It's eight and three eighths because I need to duplicate it over here. Okay. So I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm going to come over eight and three eighths. There we go. And then I'm gonna come over three quarters from that. Okay. Now, rectangle tool, we're gonna to come in here and this is gonna go the full length and it's gonna be three quarters of an inch. We're gonna go full length, it's gonna be three quarters of an inch. And this one's gonna go here. And this one's gonna go here. Right now, <clears throat> I uh, I personally, since I'm building this box out, I want some recess in there. This is where the two sided job would come in, right? So, on this particular panel, not necessarily our frame and everything, but this particular panel, it would be a two sided job because I would like to be able to cut the grooves on the bottom side and then the caddy stuff on the top side, all right, and uh. Uh, we'll uh, go from there and um, and understand what what I'm saying now and what you guys and girls are seeing there is a good 20 second delay uh, so uh, just know if you ask me questions or anything like that that we are uh, there's a um, there's a lag a little bit of a lag and What level am I on here? Um, okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and double click into this here, and let's redraw out these rectangles. One there, one there, one here, and one here. Get out of that and delete the rectangles I drew on the top side of that component. I drew that on the top side of that component, um, not realizing, again, I need to be in the component. I always forget that, uh, so I have to come back after the fact. Okay, so we're gonna push-pull this. Now this, I'm just gonna go uh, a small amount. Um, it's, it's, it's enough for kind of a glue joint, if you will. I'm just gonna go like a quarter of an inch. Okay, so we're going to recess that down 0.25, this one 0.25, this one 0.25, this one 0.25. Okay, and that's creating those, um, oh, this one went the wrong direction. There we go. Let's 0.25. Um, <clears throat> creating the dados right rabbits are on the end of the board dados go across the grain grooves go with the grain okay so we're doing a dados um we're doing the two rabbits quarter inch deep by three quarter inches wide on each end and then eight and three uh eight inches in we're doing a, a three quarter inch a wide dado all the way across uh, and that's going to be our drawer boxes okay where our drawer boxes go all right, speaking of drawer boxes, let's go ahead and get them drawn. Now, how tall, this is the important part, how tall do we want these drawers? We don't want them very tall. They're shallow drawers. Uh, they're, they're for holding miscellaneous stuff uh, and um, 
they uh, so we don't we're, we're not going they're not deep drawers uh, and um, this is still just the desktop right you know uh, this this mirror system and everything it's not the the desk itself that could be anything it could be a tabletop it could be you know an existing you know kind of uh, uh, desk with this thrown on there it could be a kitchen not a kitchen sink but a uh, you know a set of cabinets whatever the case may be but we want um, I want the depth of the drawers I probably want to stay within about I wish I had my tape measure. I want to be probably about um, three inches. Three inches. Is three inches enough? Yeah. All right. Let's do that. So if I'm going, if my drawers are going to be three inches, on this on their sides there's going to be a eighth inch bottom of the drawer a little piece of plywood eighth inch bottom right so i got to keep that in mind um and then when the drawers go into the box i need a little bit of room right so it's not like a tight fit so i'm going to go three and a three and an eighth all right so Three and an eighth. Here we go. So we're going to draw our first rectangle. Get down in here. And push pull this. And I don't know why I did that. Hold on. I don't want to be inside that component. There we go. Let me, uh, got some lines here that don't belong. Okay, one more time. Draw that rectangle. And then I want to push pull this up 3.125. Okay. Now, I'm in, I'm already recessed in here. I'm recessed in here a quarter of an inch. I got to take that into account. I got to take that into account because if I measure this, I am only at two and seven eighths, right? And I said my drawer sides are going to be three inches, so I've, I've uh, you know, I'm down that quarter. So let me uh, let's push pull this up. Uh, three and an eighth plus a quarter is three and three eighths, so three point three seven five. Okay, all right. Triple click, one, two, three, G for group. And now I can hold down the control key and drag out copies. Put one there. All right, notice that one overlaps. So my little dado was not, my little groove here was not three eighths of an inch wide or three quarters of an inch wide. Um, I think my board is, hold on. Three quarters, yeah. All right, so let's undo that for a second. My little groove here, now that says three quarters. That says three quarters. That's three quarters, so what, what, what was I missing there? Let's do that again. M for move, control key to drag that down and snap right I'm right up against that edge. There's no gap there. So what the heck am I overlapping right there? Or is that just an optical delusion? That is an optical delusion. All right, that guideline is throwing me off. Let's see if I can get rid of those guidelines. That guideline, nope. There is a line there. Stand by. Tape measure from here to here is three quarters of an inch. Tape measure from here to here is three quarters of an inch. Let's do the top. 
from here to here, three quarters of an inch. How is that not? <laughs> what? Hold on a minute. That's three quarters all day long. That's also three quarters. That is crazy, ladies and gentlemen. That is insanely crazy. Is it a glitch? I have no idea. But what I'm going to do is uh, make sure that that dado is exactly three quarters of an inch. When I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it down in there, move, and I'll just make sure that dado when I import this in is, is three quarters of an inch. Let's hold down that control key. Let's drag that copy of that over here and over here. Okay. So <clears throat> yeah, there's something oddly odd let me go file save as just in case all this gets lost right save as in the uh, downloads folder we'll call this vanity all right <clears throat> I have this is, I'm, I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to this, so bear with me just a second, ladies and gentlemen. Whenever there's an issue, we've got to kind of figure out what it is. Uh, so I'm going to pull this off to the side, this part here, and I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm going to measure from the top. It's three quarters. At the bottom, it's three quarters. Over here, I've got this extra line. Let's get rid of this line, this line, and back here as well. I want to make sure that I'm not at an angle. I might be slanting in. Kind of looks like that, doesn't it? All right, let's go camera view, standard. This is going to be the bottom. Okay, bottom view here. And I'm going to go the back view, sorry, camera, standard, back. And let's go here. Move this out of the way. That's not slanted. I thought it was, but if I measure that three quarters, three quarters, I don't know what the, uh, what the issue is, why. Yeah, that's the strangest thing. I honestly don't know, guys. Oh, okay. Camaro saying that uh, it's rounding. So hold on a second. Oh, oh hold on a second. Let me see here. Oops. Um, windows. Model styles, outline, scene, shadows, preferences. Uh, 
save, open. Yeah, several feet and inches, workspace. Okay, it's not under preferences. Well, I am not going to worry about that right now. Um, in Vetric, it's going to be critical that my pieces match, right? So I just got to make sure that I'm working with the right material. I'm going to go ahead and get these into place. And so we can just get the concept. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get it worked out in Vetric. If that is my tape measure rounding off, stand by, push pull. I'll just do that and <laughs> I have no idea, man. I'm, I'm at a loss on that one, but uh, Let's get these uh, parts in here. All right, so that's going to be the uh, tops here. Now, on these two legs, on these legs, we don't need a back. They, uh, they don't need the backboard. Uh, there's no point in it. Again, you can put a back panel behind the back here, but these don't need a back. Just the two sidewalls there. Um, you know, they're gonna be glued in and everything. Uh, and then you're going to, uh, whatever you wanna use, I'm gonna just use wood runners uh, for the drawer slides, uh, little wooden strips. But you can do uh, whatever, you know, for the drawer slides, like on this IKEA uh, version of the cabinet. Uh, you can see they just have a recessed slide in there, right? So it's recessed into the side piece of the drawer. You know, um, whatever, whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, Let's see here. Bear with me a second. Uh, I don't call. Yeah, Camaro. I'm not sure where that setting is uh, and everything. I'm getting. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm getting mixed signals. I don't know where it is. I don't. Everything is saying three quarters of an inch, but it's not. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll, but we'll make sure that the the parts fit together in Vetric. That's going to be the most important thing. Uh, we'll get it. Uh, we'll get it figured out and straightened out then. Um, weird, very weird. Now, on here, uh, basically, we're going to uh, for the runner. Uh, I'm just going to do a three quarter inch. Uh, wide by maybe eighth of an inch thick runner uh, that'll be glued in on, on, on these pieces here. They could be just surface glued um, and clamped. So uh, we're gonna go 0.75. Well, hold on a second. Okay. What, let me see here. What line did I cross? There's something. 
I'm not sure. Okay, let me know. Uh, all right, G for group, and let's move this over. I'm gonna hold down, I think if I hold down the control key and the alternate key, let me see here, first of all, move, grab this, control, all, nope, 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 hold on. I don't want the whole thing, I just want that. Move key, control, alternate, that should keep me straight across, nope. Yeah. Well, that was nice, it moved me across, but let's try it again with a copy. There we go. Beautiful. And I might as well take and hold down the control key and drag that over here. And one more time, control key. Over there. All right, that's gonna be my little runners for the drawers. Nice. And again, those little strips, uh, you can cut them down if you have a table saw. Uh, band saw, hand saw, skill saw, whatever you got, right? Um, uh, and they can be surface glued. Just two clamps on the end is fine. They can be surface glued uh, on the inside of these here. Um, on our actual jaws, let's draw that in. And our jaws. I'll, uh, I'm going to draw them full size here uh, for the moment, and then <clears throat> uh, I'm going to draw them full size, and then I, I'm going to take off my 16th of an inch clearance from the top and the bottom. All right, let's go push pull. We're gonna come out three quarters. Now, you know, typically you don't, your drawers aren't gonna be three quarters of an inch, right? Uh, most drawers and all will probably be like three eighths of an inch wide, maybe half inch or something like that. But I'm just trying to keep everything relatively simple. Uh, you can decide if you want to uh, go with thinner walls for wider drawers and things like that, you know, that, that we'll decide that, I'll decide that in the final plan. But right now I'm trying to keep everything just, it's all three quarter inch material, right? One buys, you know, and, and everything. Um, uh, pretty straightforward, where there's no having to run it through a planer or mill it down or this or that, you know, I'm just kind of um, uh, just, just trying to keep it basic. So what we're doing here is uh, we're gonna push pull this out to 0.75, okay? Now this model here is a component, it's a group. This rectangle I just drew is not. So this little uh, runner, if I go ahead and right click and intersect the faces with the model, okay? Let me uh, first of all, let me select everything. Work with me. All right, if I intersect the faces uh, with the selection, what that will do is when I come in here and move, Bear with me a second. When I come in here and move, I'll take this one and this one. Let's move these two out of the way for a second. Move, child. Oh, Lord. There we go. The... Uh, lines and everything here are drawn into this part that I can, you know, uh, push pull that groove out. Let's, um, let's make sure that that is a component. Uh, 
It is wonderful. Let's do that one more time. Push pull. Let's pull this out 0.75. And I'm going to back this up just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to select this model here and I'm going to triple click on this and then hold down the shift key and select this model. And I want to intersect those faces with that model. Now, what that should do is if I move that model, let's take these parts and move them. Move. It will keep those lines where that runner is uh, kind of drawn in there uh, and stuff. Now, there's some extra little lines out here. I don't need them right now. Delete them. And that one too. But now I can peep or push pull and I can get rid of that runner, right? You see that? Uh, now I can triple click on this part and group it together as a component. Triple click. All right. Um, let's get these two parts back into place. And on this, I've got it backed off. I've got it just a bit shy here because um, there's going to, this runner is not going to run all the way to the end. We got to push it back some. There's going to be a face to the drawer, right? We still got a three quarter inch drawer face uh, to put on here and everything. So I'll, put, I'll, I'll, I'll create all the parts and then I'll put, uh, put, move everything back all at once because they're, if they're if you create copies of the group then when you change one group it changes them all across the board so when i push uh, as an example i'll do this one when i push this back three quarters of an inch and i'm gonna go a little let's go a little more than three quarters uh let's go no no three quarters uh 0.75 okay uh, that will push them all back three quarters, right? Okay. Uh, and on this, if I push this back, now I've already pushed it back a little bit. <clears throat> so when I push this back, I want to push it back to flush with that face right there. All right, here we go. We're almost there, guys and girls. Uh, control key, let's uh, move, M for move. Hold down that control key. Let's drag a copy of this and snap it here for the minute, for the moment. Um, and over here. Let's move that back and control key. Okay, now where the groove's on the wrong side over here, I'm gonna just flip this. Oops. If I take this component, I can right click and flip it along the face and uh, flip it along the red axis. It'll flip that around the right way. And then I can move that into place. Okay. Do the same thing over here. Select this part, flip it on its red axis, and then I can move that over there. Cool beans. Uh, let's put our jaw front in there, so a rectangle. Push pull, come out to here. And I want a bit of an arc right there for a handle so I'm just gonna pick a couple of spots push pull that that works for me all right G for group all right, let's move uh, copy, control that, 
move, M for move, and then pop that over there as well. Okay. All right, for our drawer bottoms, simple eighth inch plywood. Um, we're going to, uh, one, we're not gonna be rubbing uh, the bottom here. So all these things are gonna get uh, reduced down by that 16th of an inch I was talking about uh, and stuff, a little bit of uh, give us some clearance. We don't want it rubbing on our desktop, right? The drawer slides are gonna hold it elevated, you know, when the drawer is open and stuff. So let's do that really quickly. Let's take this part. <clears throat> push pull it up 0 0.0625 and then take this part push pull it up 0 0.0625 okay and that should have done all the parts um, that should have done all the parts that 16th of an inch okay cool um, now the question of the day is, do I want on my eighth inch bottom base here, do I want to create a little groove, slide it in, <clears throat> um, and of course, do I want to jaw back? You know, is this back? Uh, we don't want everything rolling out of the back onto the floor. Now we don't have backs on the two drawer sides. We don't have backs on the back panel, but our drawer drawer does need a back right so uh i think we're going to be just pretty simple on these parts let's go ahead and push pull this back three quarters of an inch 0 0.75 <clears throat> and that should do them all all four okay and then while i'm in this part i'm going to go ahead and create an eighth inch rabbit for my little eighth inch piece of plywood and it you can go quarter inch and all whatever you want for your bottom eighth inch is fine right three sixteenths I think that's what it actually is is three sixteenths but um, I'm just gonna create a little rabbit eighth inch and push pull that in a quarter now nah, I don't need to be that much don't need to be that much uh, push pull that in uh, eighth inch okay that should do all four pieces Okay, wonderful. So that's, you know, when you make copies and everything, when you change one copy, it changes them all. Uh, and, um, and everything. And my front and back, let's go ahead and um, Let's go into this, create a rectangle. See, I'm making, it's a very simple drawer. I'm making the drawer face the actual front of the box, right? So I, uh, I'm actually not going to put a groove on that. It's just a simple little, it's a little makeup drawer, right? It's not, it's not anything structural. So I'm just going to put the back on, push, pull that out. And then triple click to make that a component. All right, let's go ahead and pull this drawer out. So let's select the drawer. Uh, here, let me put the bottom piece in. Hold on one second. Bottom piece. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Should be good there. Now, let's go ahead and pull the drawer out. So we're going to select uh, the entire component. Hold down the shift key. Select this, this, and this. All right. And move that out. All right. And there'll be your little drawer, right? Very simple. Not simple, but... All right. Model info units. Camaro found it. Good. Let's go real quick. Uh, that would be Windows model info units. 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 Uh, architectural decimal engineering fractional. Let's go fractional. And precision. Let's go down to a 64th. Enable length snapping um, at a 32nd. Let's go one 32nd. Uh, precision, enable angle snapping 15 degrees. That's good. All right. Let's close out of that. Move. Let's... Uh, Pull that drawer out again. All right, let's take a measurement and see. Uh, let's see where we're at here real quick on this side. It's throwing me off now that we've changed those dimensions and everything. Uh, 45 64s versus 25 seconds. So, yeah. Yeah, somebody don't know how to measure. Laney. Um Yeah, that rounding screwed me up there. Uh, let's go ahead and fix that uh, really quickly. Um, I'm going to take my tape measure ruler, come over three quarters of an inch. That's three quarters right there. Okay, that's that little bit that we're off there. And then, you know, I would move all of these parts over. <clears throat> let me, uh, first of all, let me hide this, hide that. Let me come in here, right there. All right, triple click into that, push pull. We're gonna open this up to that guideline there. And if I tape measure that from there to there, I should be at three quarters. Beautiful. All right, hit escape. Okay. Now let me take and unhide that part. Edit. Edit, unhide all. All right, let's uh, move this and Hold down the shift key, this. So select, shift, that shift, select this drawer, shift. All right, and move all those together. Move all them together. All right. And then we're going to take this part and push pull it to there. Okay. Clean that up. Uh, let's take this part and line it back up. This part, right. Dun, 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 dun. All right, M for move and move that over. Oops, move that over to there. Lining all these things back up. Uh, M, oops, M for move. Oh, come on now. M for move and move that over to there. Oop. 
And now that lines up without any crossover. Good. Let's come over here and see if it corrected over here. It did not. I got to just move this over. And I got to move this over. And one more. Move that over. And then let me pull this drawer piece out here. Uh, select this, hit M for move, and this piece needs to be expanded. Um, doesn't matter which direction, I'll do it this way. Uh, push, pull, we gotta go this way. Okay, move it back, let's move it back. Move. All right. Oh, let's grab this one. Explode. Explode. And move that one. There we go. Oh, don't do that. All right, one more time. This has got to get, I'm going to hide this one. Hide. Oh, Lord. Plain cleanup. Open this up. Push, pull, and snap that to there. All right, edit, unhide. Oops. There we go. Good enough. All right. So that is our desktop caddy for our mirrors and all. Okay. All right. So we got to we got to wrap this up now, guys. This is uh, uh, kind of running out. <clears throat> okay. So this is our desktop caddy. Right. So um, now we're going to uh, take and. Let me get rid of these guidelines. All right, we're gonna save this as file save as vanity. And uh, that's all of our parts. Our drawer back, bottoms, everything is good there. Now, we need to go over to Vetric and create a new file. Uh, my first parts are going to be cut out of one by material. They're gonna be cut out of a, you know that frame, right? Remember I said that frame, let's go look at what size our frame is because we're gonna lay the whole frame on the table, right? So the whole frame is gonna go on the table and this frame is 36 and a half by 30 and a half. 36 and a half by 30 and a half. Okay. 36 and a half by 30 and a half. Material surface, bottom left corner, click OK. All right. Now, our first boards, remember, we're going to, um, we're going to have our 
one by uh, fours, right, which are three and a half. Um, we're going to have them for our frame. They're going to uh, be laid out. Well, learn how to draw there, buddy boy. I'll import all the parts in just a minute. I'm just kind of giving you a, a quick how-to. All right. These bad boys are going to be snapped to there. Okay, this is literally going to be what our frame looks like laid on our table. It's going to be pocket screwed already together. Okay, and we're going to be um, our light sockets. They are one and a one one and a quarter inches in diameter. Uh, those sockets, uh, so one point two five. Again, you would order the sockets and you would measure them just to make sure that that is correct right um, and we're going to uh, have let's see here uh, one two three don't do that uh, four five six seven eight we're gonna do eight on each side so if I select those eight circles there and then I select the rectangle last a circles first rectangle last align to the center so it's gonna stack all eight of those circles up in the center of that last item selected that rectangle and then I'm going to space them evenly um, vertically you can do horizontal or vertically I'm gonna do vertically so that will space them evenly Okay, over here. Now I'm going to take those uh, circles and I'm going to mirror them using the mirror tool to the other side. I'm going to create a mirror copy and flip horizontally. And uh, let me see if, uh, bear with me just a second. Um, I'm in a training class. I'll get with you after. Okay. Sorry. Someone messaged me and I needed to let them know I'll get with them after. I want this first hole. I kind of want it like, like in the center of this kind of rectangular area here. You know what I mean? So if I were to draw a rectangle here, like a virtual kind of rectangle here, and I select, I'm gonna select all of these circles, okay? Because uh, when I move them, I wanna move them all at once. But when I move them, oops, let me do that again. When I move them, I'm gonna kind of grab this circle in the center because I have smart snapping and geometry snapping turned on, I can snap to the center of that rectangle. Okay, so I can come in here and, you know, snap to the center of that rectangle, right? So that's 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 where I want the, that position. Okay, and then of course I'm gonna eliminate that rectangle. That was just to, to help me with alignment, okay? And uh, the um, now I want inside of this area here, I want my lights to go across and all. And I'm going to go, um, I'll steal one of these circles here. But I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Let me look and see how many lights I One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six. Okay, six. Looks like it's going to be kind of widespread. We'll find out. Um, but I'm going to select those. I'm going to select that rectangle last. And again, I'm going to align to the center. Okay, align to the center of that last item. And then I'm going to space. This time I'm going to space horizontally. All right. And that looks good. I'll be happy with that. All right, so we have uh, 8 and 8 is uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 lights all together around this particular mirror. You can size this up or down depending on how big uh, you know or small you want it. Again, this is for a piece of glass, a, a mirror uh, that's going to be inside this frame of uh, 24 by 30. 24 by 30 okay you can reduce the size down uh, and uh, you know what have you okay uh, especially if you have a smaller CNC and you want to be able to do this fit it within your 24 by 40 inch cutting area just take into account your one bite your three and a half so you got seven inches on each side seven inches on the top and bottom so subtract you know that and then that's what your mirror is gonna be right Pretty much, it's not. That's not true, but because the mirror is overlapping these by a quarter of an inch. So, um, technically, let me get that drawn in there. So there's our holes. We're gonna do something with these holes in just a moment. Uh, but first, let's uh, go ahead and create our pocket areas here. So we're going uh, 23 by a quarter on this side. I'm gonna mirror that, uh, no sense in uh, copying or redrawing what you can copy. I'm gonna mirror that over to the other side. And then uh, same thing here. I'm going to draw a rectangle All right, let's uh, change that up to a quarter. Okay, and let me get that. Uh, I've got some kind of, my lines didn't snap properly. Did I do the same thing over there? I did, because I mirrored it. Bear with me a second. For some reason I didn't snap properly there. There we go. All right. Now, I'm going to take this and mirror that down. Okay. Now, since this is going to be hollow here in the middle, again, it's just the frame sitting on the table. This is going to be hollow here in the middle and everything. What I want to do is I want to overlap this rectangle into that opening a bit so I get a nice clean pocket. Doesn't matter how much, I just want a little bit of an overlap over that line, over that edge. Okay, so on these rectangles, make sure you're pulling into that opening. We still want a quarter of an inch from the edge of the board, you know, for our mirrored overlap, so just make sure you're pulling into the opening. Okay, so that way it'll look like when I select these rectangles and I do the pocket cut we're gonna go uh, quarter inch deep um, eighth inch in mill I'll just use a quarter inch in mill that's Okay, 
and bear with me just a second one more drawing here let me take a rectangle and let me draw a rectangle right here all right first tool path for me is just for visual purposes i'm going to be going through quarters of an inch on the inside of the line with a quarter inch end mill just to remove uh that inside there um, visually because remember I'm just laying the frame up on the table right it's already pocket hold together and everything uh, that first pocket cut on the inside is going to come in and cut that rabbit around the edges and all uh, we'll clean up the corners here in just a second uh, I didn't overlap them uh, let me do that let me do that Let me do that at the bottom too. All right, recalculate that toolpath. Okay, let's go clean that up. Okay, this is where my glass is gonna go. But now, once I've made that cut, I'm gonna now take some clamps and clamp on the inside here because I'm about to cut a rabbit on the outside all the way around and I can't have any clamps on the outside edge, okay? Um, so once I've cut this rabbit and everything, I can now take the clamps off the outside edge and put them on the inside uh, so I can cut the rabbit all the way around. And that rabbit uh, is going to be three quarters of an inch wide Okay, so 0.75 and uh, I don't know why my numbers are off today. 36.5 by 0.75. Standby, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what's going on with my dimensions today, but it is like freaking insane here. Uh, 36, 36, bear with me a second. 36 and a half. I knew something was off. Something was throwing me off. Okay, this should be 36.5 by 30 and a half. Let me get the, let me redraw this. Let me snap this to here. Let me move this over to here. Make sure that's still three and a half, it is. Um, stretch that out to there down here take just a second to clean up my mess guys and girls bear with me just a second all right all of these circles let me get this lined up and everything drawn out make sure that's still three and a half it is this goes there, that's good. I was all over the map on this one, all because of that 36 and a half. One more. Okay, now this bad boy, I'm going to move it over to here. Then I'm, I need it to overlap 
that three and a half inch board there, I need to overlap it by a quarter. So I'm gonna go move relative and I'm gonna just make it a positive number, 0.25. Positive to the right, negative to the left. All right, there we go. All right, now I'm gonna get rid of these circles. I'm gonna delete them because they're not centered any longer. Um, and I'm gonna take these circles. I'm going to select that rectangle last. I'm gonna align to the center. Oops, let's try that again. Hold down that shift key. Align to the center and space vertically. Wonderful. Remember, I want that first bulb up in that rectangle, so let me draw that rectangle again. There. Let's snap those, grab it by the center and snap it right to the center of that rectangle. Right there. And then mirror it to the other side. Wonderful. Now we're back where we were. We just gotta fix our toolpaths and things. All right, so this rectangle here, we're going to copy it to the other side. Beautiful. We're gonna do the same thing here, a three quarter inch rectangle on this side. It's gonna be 30 and a half, 30.5, comma, 0.75. Actually, that's wrong. Width is always first. So 0.75 comma 30.5, enter. And then I'm gonna mirror that to the other side. Now, once again, just like I did this rectangle here, I want it to overlap on the outside. Uh, meaning I want it to go past the outside edge just a little bit, just enough for the bit to clean up that edge of that rectangle. So just pulling it out just a little bit, make sure I'm pulling out. I wanna keep that three quarters in there because that's where my frame is gonna go. So I'm just pulling it out. Just pulling it out. In that pocket cut, we're gonna select all four of those rectangles. And we're gonna create a pocket cut uh, going a quarter of an inch deep. Okay. Now I'm going to recalculate the other pocket cut since I moved those inner rectangles around. Uh, let's fix this one. Sorry. One more fix. There we go. Beautiful, good. All right, one more time. Select that and recalculate that. Okay, preview that. And then our profile cut, let me recalculate that. That profile cut is just for visualization purposes, um, just to get rid of that hole. <clears throat> I, uh, Hey, Crystal, how you doing? Too much iron in my diet. <laughs> All right. Okay, so our frame is so far looking like this. We've got that rabbit all the way around on the inside where the mirror is going to go and on the outside where our one by two frame is going to go to box it in. Okay. Now, on our circles, let's go ahead and select our circles here. Uh, select those circles, make sure just the circles that we're selecting. And, um, and by the way, remember I redrew this rectangle right here, this guy. I wanna re-space these top six. I wanna select them and I wanna select that top rectangle again. I wanna re-space those. Uh, just to make sure that they're spaced where they should be. Good. Man, I could almost get a seventh one in there, but nah, that's okay, we're good. Um, 
but let's select the circles. Uh, so these, these, and this. Now, let's assume, let's assume that this one and a quarter is our outside diameter of our ceramic or porcelain socket. We're going to be cutting a pocket all the way down, but not all the way through the material for this to fit. Okay. And then we're going to cut out a hole for the light bulb to come in. We want a nice finished wood piece. You know, we want the socket to go in and, and, you know, just to about, there's going to be about an eighth of an inch face still not cut. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to offset this inward. We're going to, these circles, we're going to offset them inward. Uh, literally like a sixteenth of an inch. Okay. And that's going to create kind of a stop for our uh, so let's do, let, these are going to get cut all the way through these, these holes, the, the offsets that I just did. So we're going to do a, uh, we're going to do a profile cut just to cut them out instead of a pocket cut. Uh, there's no sense in doing them as a pocket cut. We'll do a profile cut on the inside of the line, cutting all the way through our material with a quarter inch end mill. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> that's going to cut those and let's get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of just one side. You can kind of have the visual idea on the others and all that stuff. I'm not going to delete all them, but now we're going to do a pocket cut. I'm going to hit G for group to group those together. Um, but now we're going to select the outside rings, hold down that shift key and make sure nothing else is selected. And I'm going to turn off that group. So just the outside rings are selected and these are going to get cut down to not all the way three quarters. We're going to go probably five eighths and leave an eighth of an inch material or, um, uh, 11, uh, 16th, you know, to leave a 16th of an inch material. I probably an eighth will be a little bit stronger. So let's go with a, uh, again, a profile cut. On the inside of the line, uh, going five eighths, point six two five, and calculate that. Preview that visible toolpath, and then what we should have, if we zoom into one of these, is we should have that little lip down here. And let me see what my my toolpath simulation quality is. It's like, okay, it's just a little pixelated. Um, we should have that lip there that'll stop that socket. But when we're looking at this from the front view, right? When we're looking at it from the front view, we're going to have a nice clean front. Now I, uh, I might decide, and this is something you have to visually decide for yourself. I might decide to take a small palm router and, and a round over eighth inch round over a bit and round over that inside edge uh, to give it a, a clean finish. Okay. Uh, to give it a nice little subtle round over there, give a nice clean finish or not. I might break the edges up, you know, with a little light sanding or something, but um, our socket is going to come down to that five eighths and it's going to stop there. And we still on the inside, we still have to create a little bracket to hold it in place and all. Uh, we could hot glue it in place as well, but we need it to be really stable. Hot glue is not stable enough because when we're screwing in or unscrewing the light bulb, we don't want that, that socket to spin. It's going to be a tight friction fit. That's why we're going to make sure our holes are the right size. Um, but we don't want it ever spinning, right? So we're going to, there's, there's brackets and those will be in the plans when we actually build it. You'll see those are little add ons, little glue pieces and stuff, but, um, that will be our frame. Okay. Everybody good there? I uh, I'm going to go file save as. 
and I'm going to call this vanity and hit save. All right. Now, as far as our one by two frame uh, that comes around this, that's just one by twos. Uh, you can take a, you know, a one by two. Um, you can take a one by four, one by six, and cut it down into one by twos, whatever you want, or you just get one by two material, make sure it's nice and straight. Um, I, I, I'm gonna paint this, generally paint it white for more reflection and stuff like that. Um, I, I doubt. I doubt I'm going to use anything like walnut or cherry and all that. Uh, it's going to be a painted, uh, you know, uh, light, uh, you know, piece. Um, so I'd probably use a select pine for this or something. Um, but uh, our one by two, that's going to be pocketed and then glued into that frame to make our box. That'll make our box. And then we're going to have our second sheet. that is going to be a um, one by 12. So it's gonna be 36 and a half by 11 and a quarter. Okay, and on that, uh, let me edit that. I need to set this up. Let me go back into this original one here. <clears throat> All right. Stand by. Let me delete this sheet. Because when I was in sheets, it wouldn't let me create the two sided, right? I need this to be a two-sided project for that lower part. I could do it as a single-sided project now because I, all I'm just doing is flipping the board and cutting dados and all that, but I'll do it as a two-sided project. All right, so let's create our sheet number two. This is gonna be our uh, base top. And it's going to be 36 and a half by 11 and a quarter, a one by 12. Okay, and how in the world? <laughs> Let me go back in here. Hold on, a, I uh, edited the wrong sheet. Um, 30 and a half. Let me put that back. All right, base top. I need to edit that one needs to be 11 and a quarter. All right, now it's 9.30, so we've been going at this two hours, 16 minutes. We're gonna do this uh, you know, fairly quickly, and then we'll, we'll be discussing it more in a part two where we actually kind of do the build. I'm gonna get the materials and stuff like that. Um, but, we're gonna lay this out uh, quickly. In, in this sheet, I'm gonna import in the SketchUp model so you can see how to do that. Uh, and, um, and then uh, that'll help me with uh, laying it out much quicker and stuff. So, all right, sheet two, our base top here, we're gonna to go to import vector. We're gonna to go to our Vanity uh, SketchUp file. It's going to ask about the layout of the data and everything. Uh, I'm going to do a flat layout, uh, auto orientate the parts uh, and everything. Now, if I would have 
if I would have uh, colored all the faces or something, like, you know, I want this to be the, the top, this to be the bottom and all, I could have colored the faces and I could have orientated them where it would brought them in by that face being up, you know, and stuff. But auto orientation is fine. Uh, I'm going to have it create circles for the polygons. I'm going to have it uh, refit the arc boundaries. Uh, I do not want to replace the outer boundaries for the flat jobs. Um, but uh, uh, that's pretty much it. There's going to be 25 parts uh, that are brought in. Now, I could have just... If I had certain things I wanted to bring in, certain things I didn't, I could put them in different layers and I could just import this layer, that layer, that kind of thing. Uh, but I'm importing everything, all of the parts. So let's go ahead and uh, click OK. On this, it's just going to lay out all these parts. And I'm only going to grab the one that I want. But here are all the parts of that vanity, all the drawer boxes, uh, the little drawer sliders, everything laid out here okay so it took my 3d model and it laid out all of the parts okay and everything now i only need the vanity base here okay uh so i'm going to come in and select just that vanity base uh, everything except for that. And I'm going to align that to the center of the material. And everything else right now, all the other parts and stuff, I'm just going to move them off to the side. I don't want them to be a visual... Uh, uh, deterrent or anything, but you know, we'll leave them in there. Just moving them off to the side here. Okay. This is all I need. I've got my side one and side two vectors. Now, here is where I'm actually going to clean up. Okay. Um, let's interrupt for a second. Camara said, I had a question. When you nest a bunch of parts, and you're trying to work on, say, three out of the five. Every time I go to edit G-code, it switches back to the previous sheet. Is there a way to keep that from changing? When you're in a sheet, you're talking about when you, um, when you nest multiple parts, it creates however many sheets it needs to fit. Uh, and everything. Um, if I'm on, you know, a particular sheet, that's the sheet I'm viewing and that's what I'm creating that toolpath for. If I switch sheets um, and make, you know, another sheet active or something, uh, then it shouldn't change. Uh, I'm not nesting, exactly nesting apart right now to do that, but Whatever, whatever sheet is active in here is the sheet I'm creating a toolpath on, Camaro. Uh, over here, I can also change it here as well, too. When I'm creating, working with toolpaths, I can come in and change what sheet I'm creating the toolpath for. My base top, sheet number one, you know, whatever it may be. So, when you're trying to work on three of the five... Every time I go to edit G code, it switches back to the previous sheet. Um, three out of five, what? Three out of five sheets? Three out of five parts? Are those three out of five, are those three parts on different sheets? Because you'd have to, it would switch to each sheet that you're working on. Let me know. Get, get, give me a little bit more information, Camaro, and I'll, um, and we'll uh, see what we can do about that. All right, first things first, on my base part here, I'm gonna ungroup this. Ungroup. So it's individual vectors and all. And I want to uh, get rid of, eliminate whatever vectors I don't need because this brought in the three-dimensional part. When it brought in those parts and laid them flat, it brought in the three sides or the four sides, you know, um, top, bottom, and you know, the sides all the way around. So it brought in those vectors and everything. So I have duplicates. 
I've got a few duplicates and stuff to deal with. Uh, like right here, this, it created this as a vector here when this should be the outer perimeter. So I don't need this vector. So I can delete that. When I select this, I want it to select that perimeter, that vector right there, right? Um, you know, when I'm looking at these, if these dotted lines have a black, you know, if they're not black and or you know pink and white, they've got a black little line hidden below them. Um, we want to we want to get rid of that duplicate. Okay, so there's a duplicate here that I want to delete because I only want you know this right and this. Make sure, let's get rid of this duplicate. Okay. All right, now, I am fairly happy with this overall shape, but I'm actually going to, uh, I'm actually gonna, now that I'm in Vetric, I'm gonna change up this curve a little bit so it doesn't roll in like this. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of a roll in before it, you know, uh, defines out. And I want to clean that up some. Okay. And so how I'm going to clean that up is I'm actually going to uh, draw a new rectangle. Okay. I, I pulled it off the board. I left everything where everything else is. But I have a new rectangle here. And I'm going to draw in a, another rectangle here. And on this rectangle, of course, I didn't want it that big. Bear with me just a second. Come there. Um, <clears throat> on this rectangle here, uh, I'm going to uh, take and create these corners first, right? Kind of the radiuses. So when I'm in here, when I'm doing a, a radius and all, I can pull everything in, you know, kind of how I want it and stuff and all that stuff. And what I want is, um, I want, not that, uh, I want, let me redraw my rectangle here, bear with me a second. Let me center it up. Okay. I'm going to, uh, let's take the scissors. Well, first of all, let me get rid of the original vector. Now that I have this kind of outline here, and let me take this rectangle and overlap this a little bit. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna uh, just trim that up right there. And then I'm gonna take my fillet tool. Okay. I'm gonna take my fillet tool and I'm gonna do a normal fillet and I'm gonna go with a one inch radius on the outside corners here. Okay. And then I'm going to go with a five inch radius on the inside corners there. Okay. One of them looks, let me undo that. One of them looks odder than the other. Is that identical? That side looks more round, right? So bear with me a second. Node editing, I'm gonna go into uh, here and cut the vector and cut the vector. I'm gonna mirror this side over. I just wanna see if that's, if that's an optical delusion or if that's, it doesn't look the same. So I'm gonna create a mirror copy 
and I'm going to flip it horizontally. I'll be damned, it's the same. That just looked like an optical delusion to me. I don't know, my, my eyes must be messed up. So I was just a little check and balance myself because that curve does not look like the same as that curve to me for some odd reason. Does it? That's crazy. Weird. Okay. Uh, I'm happy with that. So let's put that uh, back into place. And what I want to do is I just wanted to kind of smooth out and clean up. And Vetric is a little bit easier for me to do that. And Vetric to clean up that, uh, that corner hole. All right. Uh, I want to take my two rectangles here. And I want to make sure that they are centered, aligned, uh, you know, left and right. There we go. Perfect. <clears throat> I'm going to take, I want these two pockets to be the same size. Remember in Vetric, I just kind of freehand drew them, right? Uh, so I'm going to actually just take this one and I'm going to duplicate it. Hold down that control key and I'm going to drag out a copy. Okay, now they're butted up side by side. I am going to space them apart, but I'm going to space them evenly kind of in here. And I'm not using, this is my wall where my jaw is, right? You know, my jaw is going to be right in the middle here and stuff. But if I take a line and draw a line, I'm just going to draw a virtual line. It's not virtual. I'm drawing it, right? That gives me a center point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two items here and I'm going to select this line last. And I'm going to center them left to right on that line. So they're now stacked on top of each other. Then I'm going to space them equal distance of this line horizontally. That's going to give me equal spacing here, here, and here. Okay, I'm using that line as a reference, so equal spacing here, here, and there. Okay, all right, cool. And then get rid of that line. I, uh, sorry, I had a mind trip earlier, guys and girls. Bear with me a second. I'm lost. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, remember this cup holder here, right? I want, to, I want them to kind of be lined up and everything. But what I would like to do is kind of visually, visually, I kind of want them a certain distance, you know, uh, like if I were to use this, and that happened to be a coincidence that they're the same size. <laughs> but if I was to lay this out here, I want to move over and down a certain distance. I only want to move one because I'll mirror it to the other side, right? To keep it even and everything. So I'm going to move from here. I'm going to use my move tool. And I'm going to move relatively. I'm moving to the right, which is a positive number. And I'm moving down, which is a negative number. So on the X, I'm going to move over one inch. And on the Y down, I, I want it backed away from that edge a good amount, a decent amount. So I'm going to go one and a, one and a half. And I'm going to click apply. And of course, it's supposed to be a negative number, ladies and gentlemen. I remember what I just said. I said it to myself, but I didn't do it. Negative 1.5. Okay. All right, good. Um, 1.5, let's, let's back that up. Let's go one and one, one positive, And then on the Y negative one. Yeah, that's good. Now I'm going to delete this one over here and I'm going to take this and mirror it. And this is just me cleaning up some things. Okay. And this again, I want it. I want it visually centered over that drawer. So I'm going to take a line. Here's my drawer dado, right? I'm going to draw a line from here to here. 
I'm going to select this rectangle first, select this last, and I'm going to align it left and right in the center. Its positioning is fine where, I, where it is and everything. I'll leave it like as it is. Now, the one thing I would like to do on all of these pockets is to soften up the edges. I want to round off the edges, so I'm going to do a fillet, and this is kind of going to wrap things up. We're going to do our, our tool pass, and we're good to go to say goodbye. Uh, that'll give us our last 15 minutes. So on this one, we're actually going to go with a uh, three-quarter inch radius, I believe. Let me see. And let's see what that does here. All right, I'm. Let's back all that up. Let's go half inch. I want to kind of keep the radiuses the simple, the same. So I'm just going to go uh, half inch. All right. So one on this corner, 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 and here. On these little pockets. All right, cool beans. All right. I am happy with all that. Now, the last thing I want to make sure of is that my rectangles are three quarters of an inch. You know, remember we had that problem uh, in everything with our parts. So these parts here. I'm going to select all of them. Now I'm in version 11, so I can do this in version 11, but 9, 9.5 and all that, you have to do them individually. But I'm going to go into the size tool and I'm going to size these individually. I'm going to unlink this and I want to change all these to three quarters. Notice they're 0.7771, three quarters of an inch. Okay. And uh, by 11 and a quarter. <clears throat> all right. So I've resized these. Now it's crucial that I make sure that they are placed and positioned where they are supposed to be. Okay. Everything needs to be positioned where it should be. Okay. Let's go to this one. Okay. Let me see what line that is. Okie dokie, tokie dokie. All right, now remember, I'm going to put this in place here. I'm going to get this lined up here. But remember, from the edge, I went over, if you remember, eight and let's go look at the drawing. And on that tape measure, even though the drawing was kind of, you know, misrepresented and everything, um, I was, uh, you know, uh, eight and a half inches over here, right? And the, uh, the I want to make sure that I still have that in my vetric drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move. I'm going to take this part here and I'm actually going to snap it over here. Okay. And I don't know why my snap is not, my snap is not working too well. There we go. And I'm going to move it over eight and a half inches. So move tool, move relative to the left. It's going to the left. It's a negative number, negative 8.5. And get rid of that zero and it apply. Okay. Now, I'm going to I'm going to delete these two. I know these two are right cuz I just did them and I'm going to mirror those to the other side. Okay. Now the only thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm going to hold down my shift key uh, and I'm going to pull these out of oh, that shift key. I'm going to pull these out just a little bit. So that bit comes past the edge of the board to clean it up. 
uh, on the two inside ones. And then on the outside ones, I'm actually going to pull out just a little on the edge and then hold that shift key and pull a little out so it goes around. Same thing over here. All we're wanting is we're letting the bit go past the edges just to give us a nice clean rabbit and groove. All right, these are gonna be side two, so I'm gonna select one, hold that shift key down, two, three, four, and I'm going to move to the other side. Okay, let's create some tool pass. So our top side tool pass, first thing is we're gonna do our pocket cuts. All of these, uh, these shapes here are going to get cut down a quarter of an inch deep, so I'm gonna do them all at once, pocket cut. We're gonna go a quarter of an inch deep with a quarter inch end mill, calculate. Okay, preview that visible tool path. <clears throat> now, if you wanna use a bowl and tray bit to get nice rounded edges, go ahead and go for that and do that uh, to get those nice radius edges. You do not have to use an end mill. I'm gonna use an end mill. Um, doesn't matter whichever one you wanna do. Here, we're gonna go ahead and that's gonna be a pocket cut on this one. Uh, and actually these two are separate, sorry. This one is gonna go 3 eighths of an inch deep, 0.375. And that back one uh, is only just a holder, so it's only gonna go about maybe an eighth or 3 sixteenths of an inch deep. So calculate that. Okay. And this one here is just gonna be a pocket cut and it's only gonna go about 3 sixteenths. So 0.1875. I'll use the same bit so they can be saved together as one toolpath, but um, they're gonna be, you know, there. And then we're going to have a profile cut, <clears throat> cutting this out. And uh, I'll do the profile cut. I'll do the profile cut all the way through on the other side. So I'm gonna copy this to the other side. Copy, not move, copy to other side. Let's flip over to the other side here and let's create our tool pass for our pockets. These are going to go, they're just a nice recess for glue, three eighths quarter, I'm gonna go a quarter. Remember I'm on a quarter in the drawing. So pocket cut, quarter of an inch deep, calculate. Let me make sure I don't have an open vector or something. I'm gonna go into the join vectors and it is open, it is open. So I'm gonna join that to close it up. Uh, it, uh, for some reason it was open, don't know why. But um, okay. So we have our bottom side where our little drawer recesses are gonna look like this. And then the top side here like that and then our mirror box and if you want to you can uh, do a little groove back here uh, let's go back to side one we could do a little groove um, let's see three quarters and one and a half one and a half three quarters is two and a quarter uh oh I lost you all right, y'all still with me? Yeah, um, Camaro, it depends on which sheet you're in in the tool path, you know, um, Give me a second, I'll, I'll show you here, uh, and then we'll wrap it up with that. Um, I am losing my stream, so let's make this quick. Uh, two and a quarter. Thirty-six by two point. three quarters plus one and a half inches 
is two and a quarter. 2.25. I'm going to throw this into this pocket cut since it's only going to go a quarter inch deep. And what that uh, does is let it calculate out. Creates a recess back there where our box would go, you know? Um, and uh, you can do that or you can just set the box right on top, the mirror and all. Uh, since I'm gluing and screwing it in, I'm probably just gonna make sure it's joined, so I'm gonna put it inside of a little rabbit. Um, <clears throat> so that's what that part would look like and then my mirror box would mount in there and glue and screw from underneath you know all that good stuff and then my drawer bottoms you know my drawer walls would go in here uh, and all of that right so that would be our base all right really quickly let's answer uh, Camaro's question here I'm gonna create a new sheet actually I'm gonna create a new project that's just nesting that has nothing to do with other sheets uh, so let's go in here and create a new project all right everybody here we go uh, where'd it go there we go there we go. All right, let's say for instance, um, I'm gonna go 36 by 24 and click OK. <clears throat> and I'm going to create a part and I'm going to array that part Okay, and I'm going to nest those parts. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. I want a half inch, uh, I want six to five inches of clearance in between, 0.625. Uh, and border gap, I want them to stay away from my border by a quarter of an inch. Oh, let's go an eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch. Um, they can rotate, that's fine. Uh, remove original parts, yes. So let's nest these and it's gonna create multiple sheets on this nesting. Okay, stand by. <clears throat> It's getting there. <laughs> Standing by. Maybe. <laughs> That's a should be a simple nest. Uh, should be a simple nest. Let me see here. I've got so are my uh Oh, 
Okay, now it's moving. I was like, I was like, what in the world is going on? It should be a simple nest. There's a. Uh, There we go. All right. Okay, Camaro. All right. So, currently right now, sheet two is active. Okay, let that finish up. Currently right now, sheet two is active. And I can make, you know, different sheets active depending on which one I'm viewing, you know, there's five of them. Sheet one is currently empty. <clears throat> okay. So let's go to sheet two. Click OK. And let's create a toolpath. I'm, so I'm going to just do pocket cuts or a profile cut. And I'm going to cut all the way through quarter inch end mill on the outside of the line and calculate. Okay. Um, the, uh, all right, so cutting out those discs, right? Now, if I click on, I just clicked on manually, clicked on sheet three, you can see sheet three over here. If I create that toolpath at sheet three. If I come back into my 2D view and double click on sheet five. I can I can double click I'm double clicking on the sheets here, but I could also go back into nesting and in my nesting you know I can uh, change the active sheets here. You know Sheet four, sheet five, all that stuff there. Or I could just double click on it, right? So let's create the toolpath. Select those vectors. So give me, uh, I'm going to see what you say. Uh, so I'm going to create the toolpath for all the sheets. So I've done, uh, I've done two, three, All right, so sheet two I did, sheet three is done, sheet four is done. So let's double click on sheet five, make that active, select those vectors and calculate. Now, you're saying if I read, I had a question. When I nest a bunch of parts and you're trying to work on, say, three out of five, every time I go to edit G code, it switches back to the previous sheet. Is there a way to keep that? The screen would show the nested parts on a faded gray screen. So if we're looking at the 2D view, the nested parts are on a faded green because it's not the active sheet. Okay, it's not the active sheet. I click on a sheet so it's active. So I'll click on sheet four. Five is active right now. I'll click on sheet four to make it active. Here's my toolpath for sheet four. I click on the sheet so it is active. And as soon as I try to change or modify something, it goes back to sheet one. So... Let's open this up. I'm reopening this up and I'm only going to do half the sheet toolpath and recalculate it. Okay. So it didn't go back to sheet one there. I'm going to go on to sheet two and I'm going to delete half the circles in sheet two. And I'm going to open that toolpath back up and recalculate it. The only reason it would go back to sheet one, 
uh, Camaro is if you had something in the foreground or the background of sheet one that it kept trying to read back to. Sheet one's empty, so it's not going to go to sheet one for me at all. Period. Now, if I make sheet one active and everything, um, you know, then it'll be active. You know, sheet one here. But, buddy, I, I either I'm misunderstanding what you're saying or it's just a simple matter of you've got something. Something is selected when you've calculated a toolpath on sheet two. You had something selected on a different sheet as well, and it was calculating it also. And that's the only thing I could think of. Let me see if that is even a case. Let me see if that's even a scenario. Let's say that I select this circle here. And then I come over and make this active. Hold on. All right, let's say I select that there. And now I'm going to go over, I'm going to go into nesting this way. Because that's selected, right? Now, if I go into make active sheet number three active, it switches to that vector being selected on sheet three, not sheet four. So my man, Camaro, I'm not sure, bud. I'm really not sure. All right. Yeah, I honestly, bud, I don't know. Camaro, I don't know. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah. I honestly, don't, I'm not sure, man. If you ever want to jump on Team Viewer with me or something, that's what I use with the Digital Woodcarver customers to look at their design and go over there. You know, hit me up. I'll connect with you and uh, see what the glitch is on your end. All right, guys and girls. Well, we have cleared, uh, created our main lid of our tray, both sides. Um, we have created the cutout and everything for the lights and boxes. Remember our parts, um, the porcelain light switches uh, <clears throat> that are already wired. We got to create some kind of bracket uh, to hold these in because, you know, they're going to be a friction fit into that hole. And then our light bulb goes in, you know, and that's going to kind of hold it in, the light bulb when it's screwed on and all, but that's not a permanent hold, right? And just in case our pockets get a little, maybe a little big or something, which they shouldn't, it might not be a good tight hold. So we would need to be able to tie into this bracket somehow uh, with a wooden strip to come over and screw in. You'll see that in the actual build um, part. And, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, so we need 20... How many lights do we need? I gotta order those tonight. So let's go back to Vetric really quickly. Uh, we have eight, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 lights. Um, our one by four material, some one by two material, or one by fours cut down to one by twos. Uh, I'll create a nice little PDF with some drawings and uh, some instructions on assembly. I'm gonna create a video as well too. We're gonna to make this a reality. Um, and that's gonna be our design. So I'm gonna hit save on this. I've got a little bit of cleanup to do to organize it for you guys and girls. And I know it's one other thing that we've added to the list of things that you're supposed to have, like your B box or the B box and all that stuff. Those are coming. Uh, I, um, I want to uh, 
do them nicely. I don't want to just willy-nilly throw them out there. So I want to make sure that people, if they actually build them, they work, right? Especially the bee boxes. Okay. Um, thank you all for joining me. Thanks for hanging out with me for three hours straight. Until next time, I will catch you later. Uh, and we're going to be back to Tuesday nights, regular nights next week. Okay? Cool. Tuesday nights, 715. All right, guys and girls and everybody. See ya. Bye.